Thank you for joining us here at Under Grace Ministries. It's always a joy and an honor to share what's on my heart with you each week. Our prayers at Under Grace Ministries is that these devotionals will build a foundation, that you will be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, that your heart will be enlightened, edified, and encouraged. May the Lord cultivate within your heart a desire to grow in Him, as the Holy Spirit guides you, drawing you closer to know the Father's love for you in Christ Jesus. May the Holy Spirit impart to you revelation knowledge of his grace and his will for you. And may his word become alive to you and begin to break down anything that would keep you from his fullness because he loves you. King Jesus is the truth. And his truth will set you free. May this ministry draw you to seek to enter into his rest. And with full assurance of his faithfulness. Let's open our hearts to the Lord. And hear what he's saying to us today. Let's pray. Father God. You have given us great and precious promises. Through your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are we, Lord, that you have lavished on us with the garment of salvation and the robe of your righteousness. The fruit of righteousness, Lord, is peace, and its effect is quietness and confidence forever. Lord Jesus, with a childlike faith, we are confident that you are the Lord and that you have given us your life so that we may have life abundantly. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, in you, Lord. And we are victorious. You have made us heirs and co-heirs in Christ. By your grace, you've empowered us by the Holy Spirit to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, you have given us all that we need for life and godliness, and we lack no good thing. Lord God, when we are led by the Holy Spirit, we have life and peace, and we have great joy in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are your beloved, and we're able to be steadfast and immovable, and your word remains, and you are forever faithful, Lord. So today we lift our souls to you, we bless your holy name. And Father God, I ask you to guide us by your Holy Spirit of truth and invite your presence. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to anoint this time together and make my words yours for your glory. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today's devotion was birthed from a Saturday morning trimming of the front yard. God uses the natural to speak into our lives supernaturally. And I love how God's word becomes more alive and the truth flows from our beings as we see with his eyes, the eyes of heaven. So in the natural, the yard is the analogy of a spiritual, our spiritual walk. The front yard was in a great need of tending to, and it was overgrown. And the image in my mind and my thoughts uh, that came to me was when uh, we leave our spiritual walk unattended, we allow the weeds to overgrow and choke out God's word in our hearts. The yard that had gone unattended for some time due to busyness in life and um, no time to take care of it. The analogy here for me was 
uh, we can get caught up in so many things in life that we tend to put off what needs addressing in our spiritual walk with the Lord. When we're looking at the yard, when I was looking at the yard unattended and overgrown, it looked like to be a really big job and overwhelming it as a whole. Well, the analogy there, also in the spiritual, if it looks too big to tend to because it's overwhelming and it makes you anxious, by looking at the circumstances and situations in our life, we tend to think that it's impossible or it's too big to overcome. It's a crossroad. In the natural, we have a choice. We have a choice to make. We can allow the yard to get worse, allow more of just than just weeds to come in. It will be eventually inviting the pest as well. And in the spiritual, we also have this crossroad decision, free will, to choose, to persevere, to press into the things that need attending, and not to allow the enemy of our soul to overtake us, the world, our flesh, and the devil. We can't let it have its way. 1 John 2.16 says, For the world offers only a craving for the physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. So, I see the issue before me in the natural. I need the strength from the Lord to even help me there clean up this front yard. I get my shoes, I put on the VBS kids' worship music because my grandchildren wanted to help me. Kind of. Uh, as grandkids do. I got my tree trimmers. I got my gloves. Went and got the tree trimmer and the clippers and the weed whacker, the yard cans, and the extension cords. I put the sunblock on for protection. And I took a look at the yard and I stepped in. Analogy four. The same is true for our, in the spiritual. We have all the tools that we need to live a victorious life that Jesus has given us. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. As children of God in Jesus, we are fully equipped God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 So what are the spiritual tools given to us for spiritual victory? Well, first, we're not fighting for victory. But we're fighting from victory, and the victory has already been won. Praise you, Jesus. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Matthew 28, 18. Luke 10, 19 says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Jesus disarmed the spiritual rulers, and the authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Colossians 2.15 For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, it's against the authorities, it's against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 The power of the cross is our victory in Jesus Christ. He wears the victor's crown. And the spiritual tools, so to speak, to clean our spiritual yard are laid out before us. So whatever we are facing, we have been given authority to have dominion over it in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace and in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, 
I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Well, salvation is the first step. And as children of God in Christ Jesus, we step forward to be continually in fellowship with the Lord, loving Him, loving His Word, yielding to what the Holy Spirit is guiding us to do and to let go of what He wants us to let go of. In Christ Jesus, we have victory and we have His authority and we're protected and covered by the precious blood of Jesus. In Christ, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit as overcomers. And the one who loves gives us an overwhelming victory in all difficulties, Romans 8, 37. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us, who loved us. Secondly, our victory also is enveloped in our understanding of our position with the Lord. What's our position? We are seated with Jesus in the heavenlies. Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 6 say, But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive together with him by the grace we have been saved. And he raised us up with him, and he seated us with him in the heavenly places. The late legendary Pastor Adrian Rogers strongly encouraged us by these words of truth. He said, You are enthroned with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you died, when he died, you died. When he rose, you rose. When he ascended, you ascended. When he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he is now, you are in him. And you are now seated with him. You have kingdom authority. Begin praying, he said, in a different way. Rather than praying from the earth to heaven, start praying from heaven to earth. For we are citizens of heaven, not of this world. Which leads me to the next tool in our arsenal of victory. The power of prayer is through fellowship and abiding in the Lord. If you remain in me, And my words remain in you, Lord said. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. John 15, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 7. You did not choose me, says the Lord, but I chose you, and I appointed you, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. John fifteen sixteen. Well, of course, these verses are very familiar to us, and we have prayed knowing these truths in faith, faith, trusting in God and in His faithfulness to His Word. This is our confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. 1 John five fourteen. So the victory is in the power of his word, knowing he hears our cries, trusting when we pray, relying on the Holy Spirit to lead us in prayer. By faith and expected hope, we pray even when we don't see it yet. And that can be really difficult, but your faith will be rewarded. And without faith, it's impossible to please God, because everyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11.6 Another tool in our victory chest is praying in the Spirit. Praying in your prayer language. The Holy Spirit will pray on your behalf, praying God's perfect will. For one who speaks in the tongue does not speak to man but to God. For no one understands but in his spirit he speaks mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. The Holy Spirit will pray for us in our weakness. Romans 8, 26 says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Joseph Price edifies us with these next following truths. He said, God does not need us to defeat the devil today. Jesus has already done it and given us authority and the victory. 
Our part is to enforce the victory by simply standing our ground, which is victory ground. In other words, you fight from the victory ground by standing. You don't fight for victory. Jesus has already done it and has given us the victory. Our victory tool can be also daily clothing ourselves with the spiritual armor. It's a must. We must be armed every day in the armor of God. From head to toe, we are covered, hidden in Christ with the armor of God. We are girdled, girded with truth around our waist. We have the helmet of salvation upon our head. We have the breastplate of righteousness over our hearts. We have the shield of faith that extinguishes all the fiery darts. We have the shoes of peace, the good news. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And we also pray for all the saints. Another tool, Lord, that we, the Lord has given us is um, His truth. And that enlightens us. It fills us. Where the enemy has come to steal our victory, the Lord Jesus will come against him with the lies and the fears he breaks it down with the truth that he gives us. Where the enemy has caused us to be cautious, conscious of our failures and our weaknesses and the symptoms that try to invade our health, we combat it with the truth. We're not trying to be healed, but we already are healed in Christ. In his word says, by his stripes we are healed. So think about this for a moment. You and I have received as children of God in our hearts the forgiveness of our sins. We've confessed that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of our lives. We're regenerated and converted from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And we're born again. We're a new creation. We're not the same person. We are a new creation in Christ inside of us. We are more than conquerors. We are already on victory ground. Everything that Jesus is, we are. Our spirits are one with him. The Holy Spirit enlightens us with the truth, with revelation. And as Jesus is, so are we. Our spirits are made new. And our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions are in need to be aligned to our spirit for the restoration, for the sanctification, for the healing and the wholeness. And in our spirits we are complete, but our souls are in the sanctification process. But Philippians 1 says, He will complete the good work that He has begun in us. He restores our soul for His name's sake. Are you seeing this in your hearts? With this revelation, and the aligning of truth that flows from the inside out. Our spiritual walk flows from the victory that Jesus has given us in the victorious, abundant life we have in Christ. Will the weeds keep coming back? Yes, but we need to attend to them. Another spiritual tool we have is the empowering favor of the grace of God who gives us the strength to endure and gives us the power in our weakness. The Holy Spirit is the power in us, for greater is He that is in you than the one in this world. He gives us the power to move one step at a time, strength upon strength. He gives us the strength to persevere. The Lord helps us not, uh, He encourages us not to despise the little things of advancement, be encouraged in the small things. When uh, I was almost done the yard, the sun was really, really in the middle of the day and it was very strong and I was getting tired and I was very hot. And I only had like a little bit left to do. And of course the thought came, well, I could just leave it. But then, you know, I want to walk in the spirit of excellence, but not performance. Um, but I didn't want to leave it unfinished. And, you know, I thought about the weeds and the roots and 
I thought, okay, there's another spiritual analogy here that the last step can sometimes be the hardest in the natural as well as the spiritual. Perseverance and diligence, pressing forward to finish our, our walk of faith in the spirit, to complete the task in the natural. And, and we need to do that and be diligent in our spiritual walk as well. A hindrance of this pressing forward of completion could be distractions, um, busyness, and one also of laziness. Laziness in the natural and in the spiritual bring nothing. You get what you put into it. We reap what we sow. Nothing benefits us from laziness. Proverbs 13 verse 4 says, The soul of the sluggard craves, but nothing gets nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. Instead, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward, and you are serving the Lord Jesus. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. There's so many more things of our victory chest that we have that the Lord's given us for all things. Uh, we can talk over and more and more about it um, but I think this was a good start to get um, motivation towards uh, uh, encouraging you uh, to take a look at your spiritual walk see the tools that have been given you to help you maintain and keep your spiritual walk flowing with the Lord you have the arsenal of tools given to you in the Jesus in the victory chest of Jesus that he's given, he supplies all your needs you have the key to open it at any time you want. The last analogy I'd like to leave with you after the yard was completed, um, I took it, it just took a fresh look at it, and it was inviting. The fragrance of the trees and the grass was also inviting. Spiritually, we are also in Christ a fragrance. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 and 16 says, But thank be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ.